the dynamic type, so var is resolved at compile time. The dynamic type is resolved at runtime. And where that becomes very interesting is that in Visual Studio, that add method IntelliSense will say, well, I don't know what it is. It's going to be resolved at runtime. So it, 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 it actually is not looking for that at compile time, but it's waiting until runtime to resolve it. And a lot of this became possible because of the work done in the DLR. So the DLR is the dynamic language runtime. And it was introduced at Mix 7 along with Iron Ruby. And it's a set of libraries that sits on top of the CLR to assist language developers. And what it does is standardize the implementation of how dynamic uh, language writers implement dynamic languages on the CLR. And one of those, of course, and why we're here is Iron Ruby. So Iron Ruby was founded by John Lamb. He was hired by Microsoft in 2006. And they announced Iron Ruby in 2007. Um, and the goal really here was to make Ruby a first class citizen. And he rewrote his Ruby CLR project from scratch to take advantage of the DLR. So what is the DLR? So we talked about that. And, and, and what is this mythical creature that enables all of this wonderful things that we can do now? So the DLR, like I said, is a, is a set of runtime libraries that sits on top of the CLR. And it consists of three modules. Um, the first is the common hosting model. So this allows you to run dynamic code inside of your C Sharp modules. So C Sharp, VB.net, if I want to host dynamic language as part of it, then I'm, I'm using the common hosting model. And we'll see an example of that in a little bit. The second is the runtime. So this is where the dynamic languages actually are compiled, interpreted, parsed, and where we determine if we've called it before, where we can cache calls for performance so we're not always having to profile them. And the third is the language implementation, so obviously the most important. And this is where the language implementers turn to uh, create the, or, or parse the syntax of the language and whatever you've written into a set of abstract syntax trees that are then used by the DLR compiler to talk to the CLR. And, and what's nice is we can do this. We can take Ruby, talk to the DLR. The DLR can go over, talk to C Sharp or VB, which then turns around and talks to the CLR. And we can go right back up to, we can have through the CLR, talking to say C Sharp, hosting the dynamic language runtime, and right, go right up into Ruby. And that's a very powerful uh, thing, because when we start having the DLR and the CLR, and we have static language, and we have dynamic language, and we have everything coming together like that, it's a really big love fest. And love fests are exciting. So the question I'm sure a lot of you are asking yourself, and I know I talked to a couple of you of why you're here, is why Ruby? Why should you care about what Ruby is as a language? After all, we have C Sharp, we have VB.net, we have you know, JavaScript, we have all these great languages. Uh, what, why should you care about Ruby? And the reason that I would give to you in three words is that Ruby is love. I'm surprised you all did not walk out at that time thinking, I don't know what's wrong with that guy up there. Here's why Ruby is love. This is a conference for designers and developers. And so a lot of focus here is about design and about usability. And, and if we think about what design is, design is communication. A, a really well uh, thought out design, a really great user interface is all about communicating intent to, to users. Us as developers, our job is to communicate the design of our code to other developers. Most of the work that we do is reading code, unfortunately. Most of the practice we do is writing code which is probably why we're all so bad at what it is we do. So where I love the power of Ruby is that you can express, you can do a lot of uh, expression of your intent as opposed to just having to do heroics of jumping around the, uh, what the language is forcing you to do. There's another reason why I, I, I say Ruby is love, and that's some of the frameworks. So Rake is the build system that's on there. Cucumber is a testing framework that's on there. We talk about duct typing. We talk about monkey patching. How can you not love something that brings those kinds of things to the table? I do. You may not, but hopefully by the end you'll be convinced and be just as willing to hug Ruby as, as I am. But here's the thing. I know that a lot of you are saying, eh, we're skeptical. That, that whole dynamic language runtime thing, you know, uh, you know, I really like my type safety, and I really like the static code analysis, and I love the IntelliSense that I get from Visual Studio, and I, I, all this safety, I want safety. I want to feel secure that when I type Control Shift B, everything's good, and we can ship it. You know, if it builds, ship it. That's the way I look at it. it compiles, woo, ship it out the door, give it to our customers. 
And, and that, you know, static rules, static typing rules, it's awesome. It's, it's performant. It's, it's all of these great things. And we've, we've had that kind of discussion before of, uh, of, you know, oh, language wars. We always have language wars. And what I'm going to say to you about static typing versus dynamic typing is very little. I'm actually going to sidestep the whole thing with a picture of this guy. His name is John Lark. He works for a company called HashRocket. And many people have said this, but what I love about HashRocket, they're a Ruby on Rails development shop. And they stand up in front of huge Ruby conferences, and he says, the reason why we can use Ruby on such large scales is because we do five words. And that is, test all the freaking time. Ruby is a little, uh, Ruby conferences are a little uh, uh, looser than we would be here. And I'm being videotaped, so I don't think we'll use the actual words he used. But it's all about test-driven development. And if we write a little bit of test code, a little bit of production code, and we go back and forth, writing a failing test, making it pass, and taking these small steps, we get a lot of that safety uh, that the compiler gives to us, and the unit tests help us make our code change. But I won't spend too much time on that. Another topic I'm going to kind of veer away from is the performance aspect of it. So yes, we're talking about interpreted code. Uh, it is interpreted versus compiled code. Yes, it is a little slower. Now, uh, most of that cost is, right now, is in the startup time. So if I actually ran, let me, let me show you an example real quick. Uh, so I'll back out of this. CD. So our, our Ruby that we ran here earlier, so hello world. So when I run this through Iron Ruby, you see there's a little bit of delay while there's startup. If I run this through the Ruby interpreter, it's instantaneous. So there's a startup cost because we've got to initialize a bunch of, of classes. We've got to build everything onto the, to the framework. Um, and that is something that the, the DLR team is, is working on uh, because once, once you're past that startup time, it turns out to be a very fast language. Instead, what I want to focus on is the, the really cool thing of why, why you should care about Ruby. Because as it is right now, all I've shown you is, great, I can create classes. I can call them. I can make instances of them. I can do that in C Sharp. And all I know now is that Ruby has cool project names. What do I care? The powers in metaprogramming. So in Ruby, all classes are open. All definitions are active. So everything becomes this really interesting way of being able to evolve a design at runtime and, and inject behaviors at runtime to give some very powerful uh, or, or amazing amounts of power to you as a developer to write expressive code. So if you've, if you've used something like Active Record, so if we're dealing with a database, we can say when uh, we have a, I don't know, a first name and a last name in our database, Ruby at, at runtime, because of this ability, can say, you can say, uh, you know, my object dot find by first name. And it can figure out how to resolve that without you ever having to define those classes. And we'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. But the first I have is this question. What is this? Now, you actually have to answer this question. I'm sorry. What is it? Duck. Yeah, of course it's a duck. What is this? Well, darn, it's a duck. And what is that? Somebody who's not paid well enough for whatever it is that they're doing. It's, yeah, we all count these as ducks. And, and the interesting thing about ducks is that uh, uh, there's all kinds of them. And we can't tell what kind of duck we're talking about without some context of, of what we're working on. So in Ruby, what, what we do in this, in, instead of saying, well, these are, are three different ducks, we say, well, if you're a duck, I just want to be able to know that you can quack. And so within Ruby, we have this thing called duck typing. So this is one of the, the first